Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'll have for you is episode 20 of my Football Manager 23 save with Bradford City. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel it 20 likes on today's episode, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now closing in on 600 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Don't forget as well to get your thoughts on today's episode down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the YouTube alg algorithm. We've had a couple of transfer pieces of business since you were last week. has been on a good run of form as well at this moment in time. So let's waste no further time and get straight into it. So if you've not already checked out the last episode, obviously we got a long-term injury to Reesburg. We were requested basically to sign this Loic Mabiso. I have no idea how you really pronounce his name, so I'm just going to call him so. I think that's the best way to pronounce it. But he's come in on a long-term contract, three and a half year deal, only on £4,800 a week. He's actually on the decline in terms of his technical ability at this moment in time. But at 23 years of age, he was granted with a work permit, four and a half star potential. He looks like a very good player and he is in through the door. Obviously, with him coming in, it did mean we were over the wage budget, so we did see a departure that departure was Alfie Kilgore he has joined at Southend United uh, on a permanent transfer it's gone through straight away he's gone there and again a longer term contract we got £16,000 for him I think he was actually only here for like was it three months four months something like that he was here for four months and a week and then we got £16,000 for him so not bad business there to be honest with you and we also saw um this George this George fella the really good wonder kid who's actually only got two and a half star potential now, which obviously isn't ideal. He's gone out on loan at a Blythe for the remainder of the campaign, where so far he's got two goals. Uh, sorry, he's got no goals into appearances. In terms of how we've been getting on then since ULS overs, now I've not recorded an episode of this in a long time, but I think the last episode was his back to back 3 0 defeats against Cardiff and Fulham. After that, we had a nice little 2 1 home win against Burnley. Uh, where Fagan Walker actually scored in the 88th minute to win that game. We also had a 2-1 defeat away at West Brom. Both teams getting a red card in that game. A 3-0 win away at Luton Town. Brilliant performance in that one. James Collins scoring against one of his former sides. A 1-1 draw at home to Plymouth Argyle. A 1-1 draw at home to Blackpool before most recently beating Barnsley 3-1 away from home where Tyler Walker actually scored a 92nd minute winner in that game. In today's episode then we have Ipswich at home. They're currently 16th in the table and also Millwall away. They're currently 21st in the table. Four points from today's episode would be very nice so let's waste no further time and get into this first game at home to Ipswich Town. We have just got another early assessment of our youth intake for this year. Four and a half stars is how this intake has been rated. It looks like we've got a very very good goalkeeper and a good, uh, two sorry, good at top central midfielders which looks very nice. Hopefully they can develop fairly nicely. Apart from that we don't have any centre-backs that are particularly good and uh, well every other position looks pretty poor. We don't even have any attacking midfielders coming through on this occasion but some of them should be okay we'll see how they get on I think the next intakes in like March something like that when you get a further update so hopefully it's a little bit better by then well, with a number of injuries and suspensions at this moment in time, three long-term injuries to Cullen, Dak and Reese Burke, it means that our team is very depleted for this one. It will be for probably the remainder of the season unless we can do some good business in January. It means we line up with Harry Lewis in goal, a back four of Payne, Fagan, Walcott, So and Benji. Thompson and Demain in the midfield, they seem to be building a nice little partnership there. A fairly decent partnership is how it is currently being described. Murphy starts on the right despite us actually trying to get him out of the club at this moment in time. Walker on the left, Chapman in the ten and Collins up front. On the bench, that leaves Johns, De Silva, Doyle, Hodge, Patterson, Hartman, who's currently coming back again from a longer-term injury. He's going to be out for another two weeks, and we've also got Duhaney on there as well. Not really many options on the bench. We've got a couple of players. Uh, I mean, Leighton Clarkson's a player who's currently on trial, and he's upset about the team's mentality. I would love to get him in, but he wants 20 grand a week. He's a decent player. I think he's three and a half star current ability, but 20 grand a week is absolutely ludicrous. I think he's 21, 22, something like that. I think he was recently released by Liverpool, but enough about trialists. Obviously, we've got the return of Romney Critchlow in today's game, so hopefully he doesn't score against us. They've got some very good players. Obviously, Morgan Rogers was a player we had in on trial in the summer, but at the time, we couldn't offer any more than like 12 grand a week. Again, I think he wanted 25, so we simply could not afford him, but he's a very, very good player. I think he came and he would have been four and a half stars in terms of current ability it might have gone down to four star now that we've made all of our signings because at the moment at that time he was on uh, very early on in pre-season but Benji has a throw in here he finds Harry Chapman eventually the ball comes back to Benji he goes all the way back into Saw first time he's obviously made an appearance on camera here Thompson finds Benji bit of space for him here can he deliver a cross it's low it finds Walker brilliant block off the line I'm not really too sure that's a save or it's from the defender either way it's some heroic last ditch defending there and Murphy will be the one to whip this corner into the box 
box. I would have rather Harry Chapman, to be honest with you. Murphy with a ball in then. And Fagan Walcott has cannoned a header against the crossbar. We saw him score two goals earlier on. Was it against Burnley? And in this one, unfortunately, he's hit the crossbar of that one. But it's a positive start from us here. Eight and a half minutes on the clock. Roberts with a free kick into the box. That one is cleared away, though, by Benji. Collins should get there first, and he does. He finds Josh Murphy. Poor pass, though. Connor Chaplin. Well intercepted though from Murphy. We'll now look to build out from the back with So. Thompson goes into Benji. Two players on a yellow card. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. Plays a 1-2 with Tyler Walker. And it's with Benji once more. Driving down our left-hand side. Loses the ball far too easily though. And Ipswich will now have an opportunity to build out from the back as Roberts clips one over the top looking for Chapman. So he's underneath that and he finds Tyler Walker. A little bit of space for him here. A little bit of time as well. He goes back into Harry Lewis. We know he's comfortable with his feet. So now on the ball. He goes into Benji. Driving down our left-hand side. Can we have a bit more quality from him this time? So just giving the ball away really cheaply. Benji looks for Harry Chapman, gets on the end of it, into the penalty area. Can he win something here? Ball into the box. Critchlow's missed it. And Critchlow against his former employee and it's James Collins with his sixth goal of the season. Since being reinstated into the side because obviously Liam Cullen's injury, he scored a decent amount of goals to be fair. I mean he's again a player we're looking to get rid of in January already because it's not really worked. It's a mistake though from Critchlow. Collins' his physical presence was too much for the former Bradford City loan. He finishes very nicely, low, hard into the corner. It's Bradford City 1, Ipswich Town 0 but it's been an action packed game so far and I don't expect Ipswich to give up that easily. The ball is with the main now. He goes back into Fagan Walker across into his new centre half partnership with So Thompson finds the main. He goes back into Fagan Walker out wide here into Lewis Payne driving down our right hand side. We don't really need to force it, so I'm happy for us just to keep the ball. The main driving inside beats his man, finds Harry Chapman. He looks for Murphy, but that's a poor pass in the end. And Critch though will be able to deal with that one. Sam Morsey now switches out wide here into Kane. He's got loads of space here. I'm not really too sure why Walker's not getting back and helping out Benji. Kane driving down on their right hand side he finds Roberts we know the dangers that this man possesses ball into the box is blocked by so and it's Chaplin looking for the ball and a penalty is given I think it's the main clatters into Chaplin and Ipswich Town have an opportunity here just moments after we took the lead to equalize it will be Connor Chaplin he steps up left foot he shoots sends Lewis the wrong way it's Bradford City won Ipswich Town won they equalize pretty much straight after we've scored their fourth goal of the season for Connor Chaplin and now hopefully I'll get a minute to catch my breath as Ipswich equalise, like I say, just moments after we take the lead. Well, I guess I'm not going to be catching too much of a breath here as there's another highlight straight from our kickoff. Tyler Walker goes out wide into Khan Benji. A little bit of room for him again on this left-hand side. That seems to be where we're getting a lot of joy from so far in today's game. He goes inside to Domain. Can he make up for giving away that penalty? Fagan Walcott finds Payne. He looks inside. Brilliant ball to find Chapman. Round the defence. What a goal that is. Where on earth did that come from? What a pass that is from Lewis Payne. And what a finish from Harry Chapman. A first Bradford City goal of the season. Again, a man who we're trying to get rid of of in the summer. He's been with us since the start. One of very few plays to still be. I think it's only him and Harry Lewis who are here from season one. Great ball from Payne. Brilliant first touch from Chapman and a fantastic finish into the back of the net. And just like that, it's Bradford City 2, Ipswich Town 1. Thompson should be able to pick this ball up here. He doesn't. He eventually finds Harper. He goes out wide into Davies. He's got the beating of Murphy. Ball into the box. Oh, there's two players got in each other's way then. So, and Fagan Walcott both gone for the same ball. Chapman, Chapman, Chaplin's shot, sorry, eventually goes over the bar. Half an hour gone. Bradford City 2, Ipswich Town 1. Walton has the ball in his hands here for Ipswich. Seems to be running down the clock a little bit. He sends a sidewinder forward though, looking for Chaplin. Benji gets underneath that, but Kane picks up the second ball. He looks for a return pass into Roberts. Brilliant first touch. Shoots. Big save, though, from the face of Harry Lewis. Rogers puts the ball back in, but eventually we will be able to deal with that one. We could really do with a third goal here because they're starting to build up some pressure. As we've got a free kick here, Thompson, ball into the box looking for Murphy. Free header away, though, and that will eventually come out to Domain. We need him to make up for his mistake. Shoots from distance, and that is how you make up for giving away a penalty. Karim Domain with an absolutely unbelievable will finish from what about 30 yards out that is a fantastic strike maybe the keeper could have done better there but it's a brilliant strike from the main he's genuinely what's about 30 35 yards out probably say about 30 he's absolutely cracked one there into the bottom corner just as I was saying we need a third goal the main comes up with it makes up for his penalty mistake and that should see us go into half time ahead we need three points in this one we're looking for four points from this game and the next one on as of right now we're certainly on track to do that what a 45 minutes that was 
you have blown them away. Let's get underway for the second half. We do have a couple yellow cards and some tired players, so changes certainly will be coming in the next 10 minutes or so. Throwing here for Ipswich. Kane finds Morsin. He gets the ball back outside the football in. That is cleared away, though, by So. Chapman gets us a little bit further up the pitch, but it finds Pascanu. He steps in and finds Harper. A little bit of room here to find Roberts. Shoots from distance just over the bar. Good opportunity, that, for Ipswich there. Thankfully for us, though, they don't quite have the end product at this moment in time. I don't want to jinx it, but in my opinion, he should be doing better there. Benji now, a little bit of room to turn. He finds Walker inside into Domain. He finds Harry Chapman. Can he play a ball over the top looking for Josh Murphy? He brings the ball down. Great first touch. Can he get a ball into the box now? Ipswich got a lot of players in their penalty area. Ball looking for Collins, and that is a fantastic goal. You can have six or seven men in the box all that you want. You cannot stop James Collins. The form this man is in right now, I've no idea where it's come from, but it's a seventh goal of the season. A brace for him, and somehow Murphy's suddenly starting getting assists as well. It's Bradford City 4, Ipswich Town 1. Brilliant boy from Murphy, and a fantastic header from Collins. He's a brilliant header of the ball. He's not going to be pressing and chasing for 90 minutes, but what he does give you is quality in the air. At 4-1, I kind of think this game's done, to be honest with you. Let's now look to make some substitutes. The main is currently carrying an injury, so he's going to come off for... Patterson. Hodge is also going to come on though for Thompson who is on a yellow card. Doyle is going to come on here for Fagan Walcott and we'll play him on the left side. Put So over to the right side. Actually we can now play them both actually as ball playing defenders. De Silva is going to come on for Benji who's on a yellow card. Final change of the game. Duhaney is going to come on for Payne as well. Payne is actually having quite a good game but let's keep him fresh. Ready for that game against Millwall. Just under half an hour to go. It's Bradford City 4. Ipswich Town 1 is De Silva. Puts the ball into the box. Looking for Doyle on this occasion and he can't quite make it five and he heads just over. Goal kick. Corner ball for us here. Murphy with a deep ball in looking for Collins. This time he's cleared away though. So picks up the ball and he goes back into Duhaney on off the bench. Switches the play into De Silva. The other fullback who's come on off the bench in today's game with his gloves on. Driving forward here. He cuts back and goes all the way back into Doyle. Another man off the bench. Obviously we've changed three of the back four. Duhaney now goes back into So. The only man remaining on the pitch out of the defenders. Doyle now. A little bit of time. He goes into De Silva, driving forward into that space. Can he pick a pass? He looks for Tyler Walker. Plays it inside to Collins. The chance for the hat trick. They're probably the easiest of them all. Well, I mean, to be fair, they've all been quite easy chances. But that was certainly a good opportunity for him there to get that hat trick. He hasn't taken it. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we've not been able to make it five on this occasion. We'll still give him plenty more praise, though. The boys have been absolutely fantastic in this game. It keeps us now one point from sixth place Sunderland but I think we've got some good goal difference especially after that positive three on the goal difference a nice victory very well done lovely stuff now let's go back up hopefully with three points away at Millwall like I say it puts us just one point behind Sunderland we are now four goal difference as well behind Sunderland but to be fair Fulham are in fifth as well on 36 points so if we win and Sunderland or Fulham lose we're going to be in the playoffs after 22 games we'd have certainly taken that at the start of the season as we're currently uh, what 18 points above the drop zone we're in a brilliant space right now even with the injuries that we've got. Well, it looks like the slight injury that Domain picked up in the last game is actually going to be a pretty long term when he's out for at least another four weeks, which is obviously a massive blow for us. So it means we line up today then. Same formation as usual with Harry Lewis in goal. A back four of Payne, Fagan, Walcott, So and Benji. Patterson comes in with the only change to the team and starts in midfield, obviously, over the injured Domain. He's partnered by Thompson. Murphy on the right, Walker on the left, Chapman in the 10, who's actually wanted by a number of clubs on loan at this moment in time, but obviously until Liam Cullen is really back fully fit he's going to have to keep playing in that number 10 role um, obviously we've got James Collins as well leading the line he's been on fire recently uh, you can see our bench Hartman and Cullen that we're probably not going to be able to come on maybe Hartman if we absolutely need him so he's going to be back in full training in three days but unless we need him so I don't really think I am going to bring him on so it means on the bench we've got a right back a centre back a left back and a defensive midfielder so realistically if we're not winning by the 60th minute I don't think we stand really too much chance to be honest with you but Millwall the team who's struggling so far this season we need to go on a apply that pressure, kick them while they're down and hopefully pick up another big, big three points in terms of their team. Obviously, they do have some good players that we do need to be aware of, but overall... I think we've probably got enough to be honest with you to be able to beat them. Mason Bennett, obviously former Bradford City striker, he was on loan with us a long, long time ago, and he, well, his loan spell with Bradford didn't really work out. He's doing well though for Millwall now. Their manager is actually David Adams. When it said Millwall hire Adams, it, it actually said Millwall hire D. Dot Adams. I thought Derek Adams had actually obviously gone to Millwall. Obviously, it is though David Adams. They're also going with a four-two-three-one formation. Hopefully, we can come out on top with this one and maybe venture into the playoffs. Free kick here for Millwall. At this stage in the last game, we were winning two-one. 
this time first out of the game it goes to Millwall Bennett cuts inside into the penalty area a bit easy for him there ball is into the box Bradshaw challenges easy claim though in the end for Harry Lewis and that's the first shot of the match it certainly wasn't one with much quality in it but Cooper picks up the ball and he finds Fleming Wallace bit of space to play the ball into Mitchell that's a brilliant disguise pass I think his shot or cross either way is blocked in the end up by Lewis Payne and Millwall will have another corner They're having some sustained pressure at this moment in time it will be Mitchell to put this ball into the box right foot in swing a good ball in and Sean Hutchinson has his first goal of the season Millwall's number four Cannon's a brilliant header home 19 minutes on the clock it's Millwall won at Bradford City now we know about Millwall's threat from set pieces and it seems a pretty routine goal it's in pretty much a free header for Hutchinson the man on the line has not done his job there Lewis it stands absolutely no chance and Millwall take the lead after 20 minutes and it's more than deserved to be honest with you we do now have a free kick though on at the edge of the box Thompson that stands over it can he finish this one yes he can Jordan Thompson with his second goal of the season it's our first real attack of the game and Thompson finds the back of the net we equalise straight after we concede fingers crossed it's not like the last game though and now Millwall will go on and score five or four, whatever it was. Thompson, though, with a brilliant free kick there. He's second in a Bradford City shirt, and we are back to square one all over again. But now Millwall have a free kick here. We are going to give the boys some encouragement as Bradshaw picks up the ball and he finds Mason Bennett. The ball is dropped back into the midfield. Cooper now goes into Hutchinson at the goal scorer. A bit of time for him here. Eventually, it's found Fleming. Good inception, though, from Patterson, who's getting his first start in a long time here. The ball's eventually found Josh. Murphy in the penalty area, his shot goes over the bar. 23 minutes on the clock, it's Millwall 1 at Bradford City 1. Free kick here for Millwall. Mitchell with a deep ball into the box and what on earth is Harry Lewis doing? What on earth is Harry Lewis doing? And rightly so, someone in the defence there is absolutely fuming at Harry Lewis. It's Fagan Walcott because... Well, I mean, Hutchinson having pretty much a free air at the back post is bad enough, but Harry Lewis's positioning for that goal, I mean, it's just shocking, isn't it? Why do we never seem to score a goal like that where the keeper's just in no man's land? That's really, really poor from Harry Lewis. The long throw that on this occasion is cleared by Fagan Walcott. McNamara now driving into the penalty area, beats his man, ball into the box. It's such a terrible goal. It's such poor defending. The goal is not going to stand, though. It's been disallowed for offside. I'm not really too sure where the offside is in here. The player laying on the floor who's been fouled by his soul is the one who's offside. I'm not going to complain. The, the score is still at 2-1, but defensively, we've got to be so much better because this right now is absolutely shocking. O'Leary finds Cooper. It's Millwall to build that from the back again today. We've not really done very well today. It's been a poor performance so far. Maybe a change in formation at the break. Potentially, we go to a three at the back system. Bennett now finds Bradshaw. Surely he scores. Brilliant recovery tackle though in the end. I don't know if that was so or Fagan Walker. I think it was so absolutely fantastic there. Walker looking for Collins. That pass is cut out. Mitchell now. He switches the play with a nice ball into Bennett. He's really done pain every single time he's stood him up really. Bennett now switches the play with a good ball out wide here in it to Volg Slammer. Fleming now gets away from so in strikes off the crossbar. Again, another good opportunity there for Millwall, who this result actually takes them just outside the playoffs. I think Sunderland are also losing at this moment in time because we're still only one point behind them. That is half time. Millwall 2, Bradford City 1. I mean, we've not really got the subs to potentially change formation. I'll see what I can come up with, though. So we're going to go to a 5 2 at 1 2 formation. We're going to bring Tyler Walker off at 4 Callum Doyle, and hopefully that overload at the back now should work out fairly well. We'll put actually Fagan Walker in the middle. Uh, no, we'll put Fagan Walker on the right, so in the middle. Benji and Payne at wing backs. Then you've got Patterson and Thompson in the midfield. Chapman in the 10. Collins and Murphy up front. Walker's coming off because he's a little bit tired and he's on a 6.4. He's not really playing well. Fingers crossed the second half can be a lot better than the first and hopefully the change in formation does some wonders for us because we need a miracle right now. Thompson with a free kick. Ball is deep towards the back post. Cleared away though by Bradshaw and it comes into Murphy here. What can he do with the ball? Can he get one back into the box? He finds Doyle on off the bench. The halftime change. He goes back into Murphy. Heavy challenge from Hutchinson. Murphy gets away from him, though. Into the penalty area. Into the six-yard box. I don't know if that's a save from the keeper or what. As Payne actually goes flying into the advertising boards there. It is a save from the keeper. Out for a corner. Thompson will whip this ball in. Left footed in swinger. Can we get around the keeper? It's a good ball in. Cleared away, though, by Cooper. Fagan Walcott finds Doyle. Back to Fagan Walcott, who strikes by Fleming, it's still not clear, Patterson doesn't really challenge for it, and Payne will come away with the ball, he finds Mabiso, a little bit of time for him to put a ball out wide, but that is the end of the highlight, 10 minutes into the second half, 
I mean, it's promising, but it's it's still not great, to be honest with you. Maybe now we look to make some more substitutions because it's not really changing, is it? We're not really performing much better than what we were. We're going to drop Payne into the back three, and we're going to take Fagan Walker off now for Duhaney. We're going to get Benji off as well for De Silva, who's not having a great game. Hodge is going to come on in the midfield for Patterson, who's just not really shown enough. We're going to play him now as a... We'll play him as an attacking Mazala, and then... I mean, do we maybe bring Cullen on? He can't really do it. We shouldn't really be doing it. He's going to come on for Chapman. Hopefully Cullen can come up with a goal, a moment of magic. He's got 25 minutes here and so did the rest of the team. We need a goal. Well, no highlights have occurred since them substitutions. Lots of chances for us, but nothing highlight worthy. Two minutes added on at the end of today's game. It does unfortunately fizzle out in defeat. I mean, we asked for four points at the start of the episode. We've got three. It's not the end of the world. It just means that if Sunderland have lost, it's a big opportunity missed to go into the playoffs. Let's have a look. Sunderland ended up drawing in the 96th minute. So they've actually gained another point on us. It now means we're two points outside of the playoffs. But because of goal difference, we really need to be winning another game. We could have really done with winning that. If we'd have won that, obviously we would be sitting pretty in the playoffs at this moment in time. But it's not the end of the world. We're still 15 points above the drop zone. So I'm not going to complain all too much. Reading have absolutely thumped West Brom 5 nil despite a red card from West Brom they scored all five goals the red card I mean that is absolutely fantastic for from a reading point of view but in terms of us three points out of a possible six in today's episode I've seen better I've seen worse I'm gonna leave it there though for this video if you have enjoyed it please make sure to drop a like on there for me if you could 20 likes as I said at the start of today's episode that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 600 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out don't forget as well to drop a comment in down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the YouTube algorithm thank you very much for watching today's video have a great rest of your day we've got another long term injury this time to Noah Wadsworth he's going to be out for 5 months with a broken foot just what I wanted. I'll see you all later though. Peace.